tackled fight. But before I get to the business of the afternoon, I couldn't let this moment pass without paying tribute to a man of the tragic news of Joe Lewis's death today. Well, Joe Lewis has been a very influential part of this reporter's life. And even as the news was announced here today, there was a very touching moment because one of Joe's greatest opponents, himself a former heavyweight champion of the world, Jersey Joe Walcott, chairman of the New Jersey State Boxing Commission, got the news by way of the public address announcement. His eyes filled instantly with tears. He could stay in the arena only so long and then left to gain control of himself. You remember those two Lewis fights with Walcott? The first one, December 5th, 47, in the Old Garden. Hotly disputed decision, which went to Lewis. Then the rematch, June 25, 48, in Yankee Stadium. Joe KO'd Jersey Joe in the 11th round. One's memory is flooded by the remembrances of Joe Lewis. Perhaps most overlooked, even more than his sociological implications stemming from the Schmeling knockout in the second fight in the first round, were his capacity for memorable one-liners that transcended sports. There was a day at Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, his training camp. Towel wrapped over his head, Swami fashion. Media people going at him. Con's gonna do this to you. Con's gonna do that to you. And Joe bent his head back laconically and said, he can run, but he can hide. Then there was that day in the early 40s in the old garden, World War II on. A big, big affair for naval relief. Everybody there, Fred Astaire, Cary Grant, Walter Pigeon, Myrna Law, you name them. But Joe Lewis stole that show too. He said, we'll win, because we're on God's side. Joe Lewis, together with Jackie Roosevelt Robinson and Muhammad Ali in the American history books not just the sports books. Our condolences to his family. We spoke to his widow, Martha, a short time ago. There'll not be another. Not in our lifetimes, that's for sure. Now to the more mundane business of the day. It'll be in this 19 and a half foot ring, Hilmer Kenty defending against Sean O'Grady challenging. And many of you don't know that much about Hill McKenty. In fact, what he craves is recognition. For you to be better informed on this quick-footed, lightning, fast-handed fighter, let's meet Hill McKenty in the ABC way. His boxing history, his family life, up close and personal. Hill McKenty, to the right of your screen, got his amateur boxing foundation beautifully. More than 130 fights. This one, the national title. He won it against the toughie Aaron Pryor, now himself a world professional champion. But in the rematch, in the Olympic trials in 76, he lost to Pryor. Discouraged, he quit, only to come back for another try. He came back at the now famous Kronk Center in Detroit, Michigan. He came back to the stable of which now Tommy Hearns is a part. A boxing stable supervised by a very great boxing mind and trainer and manager. His name, Emmanuel Stewart. His watchful eyes cover every aspect of the fighter. He knows what makes his fighters tick. Kent is very motivated by the fact that he wants to give his family a better life. In the short period of time that he's been in Detroit, uh, he's made fantastic progress. He has a nice home. It's very, uh, very family orientated. And I think the prospect of losing everything that he's gained or possibly jeopardizing it creates a lot of fear in him. And I think this is what motivates him to a great degree. Manny Stewart is right about that motivation, about the fine home. There is the home that he has created for himself, his wife, and his seven-year-old son. And he knows where he's at. As a family, we try to stay the same, you know, and I think we have, we've stayed the same people, but it's changed because there's such a demand on my time now. And I'm, you know, I'm gone, I'm gone away from home a lot. And uh, my wife and my son, they have to learn to deal with that also. I, I, I can adjust to it, I hope he can. He loves the box, and uh, it's his life, you know, it makes him happy. So 
I'm hoping that, you know, when this fighting is over, he'll be just, you know, as content as he is, you know, now with fighting. I wouldn't want my son to be a fighter. It's hard enough watching Hilmer fight, you know, and I hope my son would do something safe, you know, like sing or just be cute, you know, something like this. I definitely wouldn't want him in the ring. My son, he, he definitely knows that I'm lightweight champion of the world. Uh, matter of fact, he'll, he'll tell people that. And matter of fact, he'll tell everybody that. I think he's the best PR agent I could ever have. <laughs> well, his family knows who he is. He knows who he is. And they are adjusted to the fighting life. But what he wants is recognition. I feel I have been denied some of the recognition that I may be due, you know, because of uh, some of the other great fighters on the forefront, such as uh, Ray Leonard and Thomas Hearns and uh, even Roberto Duran. And uh, Roberto Duran was a great lightweight, but I'd like to uh, finish my career by making people forget about Roberto Duran as a lightweight and remembering Elmer Kenty. We're back live at ringside in Atlantic City, New Jersey. There is the champion's wife, Barbara Kenty, and Hilmer Kenty Jr., seven years old, reminds you of Sugar Ray Leonard's kid, doesn't he? There is the champion, Hilmer Kenty. He weighed in at 134 and a half. Remember, he is a very quick-footed, quick-handed fighter, a splendid boxer, yet with his swarming punches has knockout capacity, a record of 20 and 0, 15 KOs. There is Sean O'Grady, the challenger, born in Austin, Texas, from Oklahoma City now. Most of his fights fought in Oklahoma. In fact, lightly regarded, perhaps too lightly, judging by his exceptional showing against Jim Watt in Glasgow, Scotland, last October 31st, 1980. This kid can crowd you, he can muscle you, and he is no dope. He's got a lot of ring wisdom. Now, the question about O'Grady, what happened in the Watt fight, and what about this fight? So let's meet Sean O'Grady. The O'Grady-Watt fight, October 31, 1980, was a vicious affair. Ninth round action typical, except for this. That left, that tore apart the right eye, right to the right of the eye of Jim Watt. Many thought the fight would be stopped then in O'Grady's favor. But no, the ring doctor said let it continue, and Watt wanted to continue. Then in the tenth, this, who butted whom? Watch closely. Both heads coming together. Now, O'Grady said he was intentionally butted. But the fight continued, and O'Grady, a bloody mess. The fight was stopped in Watt's favor in the twelfth round. Watt was the winner. O'Grady doesn't like to even think about the Watt fight. Uh, the, Watt, the Watt fight happened in 1980, and uh, I don't want to look back on the Watt fight. I'm here to fight a fight uh, today to win the world's championship, and I, uh, I don't want to even talk about the Watt fight because it's been in my past, and uh, uh, what happened happened, and it's not going to have any bearing on this fight at all. That may be, but the nub of it is you felt you were jobbed and that you were the victim of a butt in the, tw in the tenth round that ultimately caused him to stop the fight in his favor. True or not true? It's true that I was butted, exactly. Purposely butted. All right, that aside, Kenty is a quick-handed, quick-footed fighter. What will be your approach to this bout? I've prepared for all different types of styles. Uh, the reason for that is uh, if you prepare for a fight, for one kind of style and your opponent uh, changes his style, then you're not ready for what he has to offer. So I've prepared for a lot of different styles and strategy will be determined between the uh, first and second round uh, as to what I'm gonna do throughout the fight. Uh, I'll go out the second round, try whatever my father, Pat O'Grady, tells me to. Then if that works, I'll stick with it. If not, I'll change to something else. You're looking at number 24, the baseball immortal, the Hall of Famer, or say hey, Willie Mays, a man earlier touched too and reduced to tears with the announcement of Joe Lewis's death. Now we're getting ready for the start of the fight, the tail of the tape. In the age, O'Grady, the younger man, but no real differential there. Weight, no real differential. Height and reach, no real differential. They are physically matched. 
The fights are scheduled 15 round a championship, of course. 10 point must system of scoring. The referee and two judges score. The referee is Larry Hazard. He is from Jersey, has only refereed one title fight in his whole career. The action underway. One point to remember, three knockdowns in a round will end the fight under the rules. Quickly, too, I must tell you that Hill McKenzie has been suffering from a heavy cold, a heavy chest and nose congestion. How much it'll affect his fight remains to be seen. We see those quick hands of Kenty that I have already mentioned. Very quick with the jab, very quick with his combinations. Moves laterally well, moves in and out well. Connecting with the combination right there. seconds into round one. Good sized ring, 19 and a half feet. Plenty of room for each man to operate. And at 30 into the round. So Grady trying to work to the midsection and score. Quick right. Grady, haunted in Scotland by threats upon the lives of his family, wanting to forget that fight, but he fought with great courage. A minute left in the first round. Some call O'Grady a bleeder. His father, Pat O'Grady, and his corner says he has bled in three fights. Does that make him a bleeder? Kenny scoring with quick hands in combination. Good right by Kenny. Brady fights back. It's a busy first round. Good action. Counting down now to the end of round one. Round two underway, we listened closely to O'Grady's corner. They didn't even talk about strategy the way O'Grady suggested in my earlier interview with Sean. Yes, they liked his mode of fighting in the first round. In the beginning, he went to the midriff, scored some there, but basically the round was Tenty's and scoring effectively with combinations. O'Grady will want to mix it up if he can. Get inside. Good left by O'Grady. Got a lot of followers here. Sure gun him in Oklahoma. We're a minute five seconds into round two. Brady making his left jab work some now. Empty squad with the left, missed with the right, double with the left. Brady down to the midsection. bit of infighting. Kenny with the quick hand scoring more blows. Got 
a minute left in round two. and then getting out of there before O'Grady can do any damage. 35 seconds left in the second round. Somebody wrote a book about O'Grady, called it Living Legend. Hard to be a legend at 22, but in the writer's mind, he is. Out comes the mouthpiece. Canty's mouthpiece. The end of the round. Oh! No commercial! Suddenly, as the round was about to end, and of course, there's no saving by the bell except after the final round. The blow by Kenny, an apparent right sent by uh, oh. O'Grady sent Kenty down. Tough kid, O'Grady. Changed the nature of the round, perhaps. Let's look at it. Now let's see how Kenny left himself open. There's the right down below, and that's what did it. To the belly. There it was again. O'Grady shocking this crowd just before the bell with a right to the belly that sent Kenny down. All right, come on. Look out. I'll get him up here. Come on. We're getting ready for round three, a stunning end to round two. And it had to be a big, big boost for O'Grady's confidence. O'Grady warming to the task. Meanwhile, Kenty, who suffered right leg cramps in his last two fights, is not setting well. And he may be worried about that. Not making excuses for him, only trying to explain. Suffered the cramps, especially against Villamar Fernandez in the 13th round of his last fight. Decision, Kenty won, 15 rounds. O'Grady scoring with the left. O'Grady now becoming the aggressor. A stunning turn of events here. The kid who'd been laughed at by those outside of Oklahoma as having a career of so-called club fights. 76 in all, 74 victories. Losses only, that controversial thing to what? To Little Red Lopez. Minute 10 into round three. And it's a confident O'Grady. Look at him, teeing off on Kenji. Kenny hurt. Kenny backing off. Emmanuel Stewart told me he was worried about this fight because of Kenty's cold. Now he's worrying about this fight because of O'Grady's attack. See the timer in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. A very busy fight, and O'Grady taking it over in this third round. Minute 10 left. As it breaks them, the two judges, Vincent Rainoni of the Bronx and Richard Murphy, Richard Murray, correction, of New Jersey. 50 seconds left in the third round. A beautiful round for Sean O'Grady. Slugfest with this kid. He's in deep trouble. Half a minute left. Kenny trying to fight back down 
the late seconds of the round, but O'Grady has pummeled him in this round. Make no mistake about it. Ever since the knockdown, it's been O'Grady. We're back live at ringside in Atlantic City at stake. WBA lightweight title, Sean O'Grady to the right. Hill McKenty, defending champion. Flawed, just before the bell, ended the second round. Ever since, it's all O'Grady's momentum. A great third round for O'Grady. Kenty hurt. Emmanuel Stewart told Kenty, you're fighting back only in flurries. Put it all together. Easier said than done, perhaps. What Kenty has to do is get back to boxing basics. He's got to move those hands and form his combinations, use his superior hand speed, and stay out of trouble with his foot speed. Move in and out. Recapture the momentum, if he can. This is a fearless kid. Sean O'Grady. I'd like to alert our local stations along the line. We'll be taking the station break at the end of this round. Fourth round action. I like the way O'Grady will go down to the stomach. Let Kenty know he's ready to go there. Impactful blows. Debilitating. Kenty scoring better. Good blow by Kenny. Now Kenny's working it the way he has to work it to win this fight. Less than a minute left in round four. Thirty seconds left in the round. O'Grady working the middle again will return with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after these words from our local station. Live at ringside, round five, a busy, active fight. One knockdown just before the end of the second round. O'Grady with a right to the midsection, fell Kenty. In a tremendous ebb and flow to this fight thus far. Kenty got back to boxing better in the fourth round, but in the weaning seconds, O'Grady started coming on again. Very effective with his blows to the stomach. Remember, fifth round action, WBA lightweight title at stake, Kenty defending, O'Grady challenging. In the first round, Kenty dominating with his boxing, but the whole momentum changed with the knockdown of Kenny just before the end of the second round. O'Grady was the master in the third round. Kenty returned to boxing in the fourth round. Look at O'Grady. He squat with a good chopping right, and Kenny was hurt. And Kenny can't get off the ropes, or at least he hasn't thus far. And that's no place to be. Kenny's all right when he boxes. When he trades, he's in trouble. When you keep Kenny immobile like that against the ropes, you're in charge. And Kenny is hurt. There is no question that Kenny is hurt. A 
minute and 10 seconds left in the fifth round. Hazard breaks them up. Larry Hazard, the third man in the ring. A Jerseyite. of the round scoring. Shifting tides. Wonder what effect, if any, that cold is having on Kenty. The chest and nose congestion. Right there, you saw Brady with a good right, and another that spun the fighter, Kenty against the ropes. But look, what a cut, another huge cut. O'Grady always called the cutter. Outside the corner of the left eye. And Kenty going to work on it. O'Grady claimed the butt. Right to work on O'Grady's eye. Right to work on it. in which the fight can continue will result in the loss of points to the offending fight. There is no evidence. There is no evidence thus far by Larry Hazard of a foul. Now let's look at it again. Right now, he is talking Hazard is as we look at this. That may be where it happened. Can't really tell. In any event, the cut is repaired. Over in O'Grady's corner, his father, Brian Kelly, his trainer, and we go into round six for the action. I'm trying to determine officially if Larry Hazard took points away from Kent. 25 seconds into round six. Good quick right lead by Kent. Working on the eye, got it partly open again. Now the eye is getting messy again. One minute into round six. Kenny working systematically on that eye. You can see it. Brady's career haunted by butts and claims of butts. We're a minute and a half into round six. The fight takes on still a different tone. Now Brady has Kenty against the ropes and pummels him. Kenty with a good uppercut. strongly again. Hazard did not take any points away from the fighter. He notified the officials the cut was caused by an accidental butt. I'll explain what happens if a fight has to be stopped on such a basis in just a moment. In the meantime, the blood is causing O'Grady all kinds of trouble. Brady fights back like a tiger and hurts Kenty with a left. I'll 
tell you this O'Grady is showing us something. Right, hold on, step back, Sean, step back. You see him wiping away the blood with his right glove. The end of the round at hand. Live ringside, round seven, WBA World Lightweight Championship at stake. A very, very active fight. One knockdown, just before the bell, second round, right by O'Grady to Kenty's stomach, set Kenty down. O'Grady has been a stunning surprise, but an accidental butt. Two rounds ago, opened up the left corner of O'Grady's left eye and has caused a steady flow of blood. All that you have to know about the rules is if the fighter stopped for that reason, the fighter who's ahead on points gets the decision. Forget about all other technicalities. Okay, round seven. O'Grady's corner told O'Grady he was well ahead. Ace Morata worked over the cut, but quickly it's reopened. Of course, that's O'Grady's corner telling O'Grady that. You saw Kenty staggered by that O'Grady left, back against the ropes, and there goes O'Grady. The kid is putting on a great show. He really is. Despite now, cut over Kenty's right eye. A lot of blood. So the bloodletting is almost even at this point, point. and O'Grady is chewing him up. Kenty in deep trouble, and O'Grady is pulverizing him. What O'Grady has to do is keep his composure, work the opponent, not go wild and not fail to take the opportunity to put Kenty away. We are a minute, 45 seconds into round two, uh, into round seven. Look at O'Grady, tear him apart. Larry has it breaking them. Stewart chewing his nails. Can't believe what's happening to his fighter. Boxing skills materially reduced. Kenny fighting for his life. 45 seconds to go in round seven. It breaks them. Gives Kenny some room. 20 seconds left in the seventh round. Kenny fighting back, but too little, too late in this round. Tremendous round for Sean O'Grady. We're back live at ringside, round eight. This is a pistol of a fight, I'll tell you. It's half a war. Kenty can land combinations two and three at a time. It doesn't phase O'Grady, who's able apparently to absorb punishment much more readily than Kenty. Grady had Kenty staggered in the last round. He had him down just before the bell in the second round. That's when the whole fight turned. You know, Grady's corner, they were telling him between rounds, you've got the fight under control. He's hurt much more than you, son. Meantime, in Kenny's corner, they repaired his right eye, which showed blood. A minute gone in round eight. Kenny scoring well there. If this fight goes the distance, there's plenty of time for either fight. And look at Kenny pouring back, or rather O'Grady pouring back. Count. As the mandatory eight count, the left did it. Again, the blood 
screams down the left cheek of O'Grady. The second knockdown of the fight. The left did it, and Kenny is in terrible trouble. The right sent him against the ropes. Kenny is showing real courage, but O'Grady is chewing him up. Stunning, stunning turn of events in this fight. We are two minutes and 20 seconds into the round. It is the eighth round, the WBA lightweight title at stake. And Sean O'Grady hitting on the break. Has some cautions, can't he? Kenny apologizes. Grady's punches have the greater meaning now. Kenny's punches are doing little to phase O'Grady. We approach the end of the round. Another big round for Sean O'Grady. Came at 135. Beautiful. There. First to right uppercut, then the left that actually put him down. So the second knockdown of the fight. It happened in the eighth round. Another angle. There was that left behind the head of Kenji in that shot. And Sean O'Grady fighting the fight of his young life at age 22. Kenji, blood in the mouth. Hey, put your hand, hey, put your hand from your knee to your nose. Right, put your hand. Do it. Okay, all right. Being tested right there, his reflexes. Put the hand up to the nose. Now the bell, and it's round nine. They cannot totally close that cut of O'Grady's. The instant the action begins, there's a trickle that later becomes a flood. You see Kenny scoring against that eye twice in a row with the left. Trying to keep it going. There's the left by Kenny being used to good effect. right was a kind of pawing right that stirred the crowd more than its effectiveness should have. Brady going down to the belly again in this round. He's mixed it up very effective. And now he's got Kenji against the ropes and he's staying off on him. Loading up. And at 30, into the ninth round. That was a good right by Kenji to O'Grady's belly. It stopped O'Grady for a moment. But O'Grady fights right back. Tough kid. He's taking the best Kenji can offer. And it's not deterring him. Look at the blood down his left cheek. Good left by O'Grady. Jarred Kent. 40 seconds left in the round. Another good left by O'Grady. Thirty seconds left. Keeps working for that bloody area, that 
right lead scored right there. Then the right uppercut you just saw. Coming to the end of the round. We're back live, ringside Atlantic City, 10th round. Sean O'Grady in the lead in this fight. Right there, a good left. The astonishing thing about Hilma Kenty, he's 25 years old. He has had virtually no foot movement in the last four or five rounds. At 25, knowing his style of fighting, one would have thought he could move with much more maneuverability than he's shown in this fight. 35 seconds into the round. A number of times, pinioned in the corner, against the ropes, no mobility at all. On the end fighting, O'Grady roughing him up, mixing it up from the stomach to the head time and again. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line that we'll be taking a station break at the end of this round. Brady, clearly the aggressor. Even the cut, the corner of the left eye, which is virtually bathed. Brady's left cheek and blood throughout the fight has not deterred him. We have had two knockdowns, both of Kenty by O'Grady. See O'Grady working to the belly. Kenty struggling to hold himself together. But O'Grady giving him no quarter. We had it. Official notified the judges, the referee did, Larry Hazard. That caused O'Grady's cut, which is wide open again and bleeding profusely. Oh, good shot, right, and that hurt O'Grady. Canty scored right to the area of the cut with his right. So O'Grady goes back to the belly, which is smart fighting. Two minutes and 30 seconds into the round. It is round 10. And look at O'Grady go down below. It's fighting an excellent fight on all counts. We'll return with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after these words from our local station. live from Atlantic City, WBA lightweight crown at stake, and O'Grady may be on the way to becoming the new champion. He is dominating this fight. There has been little movement in the legs of Helma Kenty, most untypical. O'Grady has been effective to the stomach, and twice has knocked Kenty down. In O'Grady's corner, they said, you got it, baby. Don't worry about the eye. You're in total charge. You got it. It's the 11th coming up. Let's keep working at him. Work to the middle. And O'Grady is. We're almost a minute into round 11. Remember, scoring 10-point bus system referee and two judges. O'Grady effective with the combinations. Driving Kenty into the corner where he has been driven so often during the course of the afternoon. Larry Hazard breaking them up. Kenty in a brief headlock. There to the right, to the middle. O'Grady fighting very intelligently. Kid of 22, a minute and a half into the round. Oh, Kenty rebounding with two blows that hurt. And O'Grady felt them. Trying to load up 
right now, trying to measure O'Grady. Oh, O'Grady was hurt. Now with Irish fury, he fights back. But O'Grady was hurt, no question about it. Suddenly, Kenji registered perhaps the strongest blows of the afternoon. Now O'Grady comes back, and it's Kenji who's holding on. What a fighter this kid is turning out to be. What heart. 45 seconds left. It is the 11th round. I tell you, watching the flow of this round, and now it's Kenny who's in trouble. It's a reminder of the Leon Spink Sisto Saria fight in Montreal, where from second to second the tide would turn. At least in this round, that's what's been happening. And Kenji is hurt as O'Grady goes down below. Those are the blows that debilitate you, that double you up. The end of the round at hand, and what an 11th round it has been. We're back live at ringside, round 12, Atlantic City, WBA lightweight ground at stake. Just before we had a break for that commercial, we saw what looked like a couple of low blows registered by Sean O'Grady, but the referee, Larry Hazard, issued no cautioning, no warning, so we'll have to accept them as legitimate. Now in round 12, round 11, Kenty started big. Hurt O'Grady, got off his best blows of the fight. May have punched himself out. O'Grady took over and in the last two minutes dominated. Had Kenty in trouble. It's been that kind of fight. Just a tremendous competition. week from today, next Sunday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, you'll see highlights of the Holmes-Trevor Burbick fight held in Las Vegas, Nevada last night. Larry Holmes will be there to talk about it and about his future. Hurt! O'Grady hurt Kenny with a left to the belly. And that's why you see no foot movement in Kenny. That left to the belly stopped Kenny dead. Look at O'Grady going to the belly. He has done that so effectively throughout the fight. Moving up there is Kenny. Kenny has not been able to utilize the ring at all in terms of foot movement. Basic deficiency. I don't know whether it's physical or what, but he has not moved the way I've seen him move in the past. A minute left in the round. It is the 12th round. Again to the midsection, and again Kenji felt it. Quick combination. Strong, direct blows. No looping of those blows. Crisp. The end of the round at hand. <laughs> round 13, live from Atlantic City. Sean O'Grady in the green trunks. Noel McKenty defending the WBA lightweight ground in the white trunks. And O'Grady, in my scoring, way ahead now. Fighting a tremendous fight. Either he has caused Hill McKenty to slow up hopefully, or Kenty's got a leg problem, a hangover from the leg cramps he suffered in the right leg in his past two fights. Kenty has not been able to use the ring. Right, 
Brady has mounted a tremendous attack to the stomach, succeeded with it throughout the fight. He has floored the opponent twice, the first time just before the bell in the second round, for a minute into round 13. It is clear now, barring only the 11th round in the first minute when Kenty scored his best blows of the fight, but Kenty's blows have lost much of their snap. There's O'Grady working the jab and successful. Grady laughed at and scoffed at for alleged club fights in Oklahoma. Well, the people in Oklahoma City believed in the kid, although Kenty scored well with a combination right there. Grady fights back. He has been tremendously resilient. There may have been a left that was low there, but referee Larry Hazard said nothing. Kenty with a good right lead and then a left in combination. But not enough. It wouldn't seem to me, not at this stage. Half a minute left in the 13th round. As Brady pulls Kenty against the ropes. Up, working the uppercut now in the recent rounds. Pretty well. Still the blood flows from the left corner. The left guard. Back live Atlantic City, round 14. Can you go six minutes more, son? That's what the father, Pat O'Grady, said to Sean O'Grady in the corner. Six minutes more and you're a champion. Can you do it, son? And the kid said, I can do it. I can go 20 minutes more if I have to. That's what's at stake the WBA World Lightweight Championship. Going down, as has been his wont throughout the fight, to the belly. Occasionally, some of those blows have looked low. However, I repeat, Larry Hazard has not cautioned O'Grady at all. When O'Grady's eye was cut much earlier in this fight, he claimed butt. Larry Hazard notified the officials, yes, it was a butt, but it was an accidental butt. Which, if the fight had been stopped, would have been awarded to the fighter then ahead on points. You've seen Kenty in that posture much of the afternoon, often against the ropes, sometimes pinioned in the corner. Brady making his left work well now. Oh, a good right lead, and then a left by Kenty. Stung O'Grady, that right stung O'Grady. So there is fight left in Hilma Kenty who must know that he's in a very troublesome position. Minute 40 into the round, round 14. Brady moving back to the belly. And again with that right lead. This, this round a better round for Helma Kenty than some of the recent ones. Forty-five seconds left in round 14. Repeat two knockdowns in the fight. Both scored by O'Grady. Quick right to left to the belly of Kenny. Kenny stunned by it. Kenny back in the corner. Again, no movement. Unable to fight his way out. Grady pummels the champion. Kenny bent over, holding on. The impact of the stomach attack clearly felt by, by Kenny. 
O'Grady has been a tremendous competitor. Sean O'Grady. Wide world of sports. 20 years. Our 20th anniversary. On the 25th. 20 years. ABC's Wide World of Sports. With an uncontested superiority. Naturally, we're proud of it. Now, Sean O'Grady. Round 15. The 15th and final round. John O'Grady, who came into this fight with many who did not believe in him. He will emerge from this fight with many who do believe in him. Because Kenty came into this fight a highly regarded champion and with good reason. Trained by Emmanuel Stewart, one of the most respected men in boxing, out of the famed Grunt stable of fighters, including Tommy Hearns. Fifty seconds into the final round. Fight scored by the referee Hazard, the two judges, Vincent Rinoni and Richard Murray. Channing, let's go, Sean. Let's go, Sean. They weren't that way in the beginning, but this kid has taken them over. A minute 15 into the final round. Canty, his own right eye, all puffed up. A big cut over it. A minute 40. Into the final round. O'Grady continues to be the aggressor. Continues to do the cleaner, heavier scoring. He has dominated this fight. Kenty against the ropes as he has been so many times before. The crowd is now on its feet. Except for the few in the first rows at ringside. Jersey Joe Walcott back in the arena. He had left out of emotion when he learned of Joe Lewis's death earlier today. But now he's back. He is watching one of the better competitive fights of recent months. There are 35 seconds left in this fight. There is weariness in O'Grady. He has thrown a lot of punches. It is understandable. And there has been weariness in the legs of Hill McCanty for many rounds. Await the decision to determine whether or not the referee and the judges agree that Sean O'Grady won it. What a month of May, as you just saw on ABC and sports. The Derby, the Preakness, the big fights. There is Jersey Joe Walcott. Just congratulated young O'Grady, Jay Edson, past referee. But we'll have to see what the official decision is. And so far, no word. I must say O'Grady was a surprise. One looked at his whole list of opponents. And one tended to discount his string of victories. We are about ready, apparently, for the decision. Here it comes.
Ladies and gentlemen, here is your decision. Judge Vincent Rainoni scores the fight. 146, O'Grady. 138, Kenty. <laughs> Judge Richard Murray scores the fight. 147, O'Grady. 137, Kenty. That does it. Referee Larry Hazard scores the fight. 146, O'Grady. 139, Kenty. Winner. Unanimous Lou decision. Lou richly Lou deserved. Sean O'Grady is the WBA lightweight champion of the world. And we will get Sean O'Grady over here for an interview. But in the meantime, let's go back to our polished man in the studio, the ineffable Frank Gifford. Okay, we're back live at ringside in Atlantic City, and with me is the new WBA lightweight champion of the world, Sean O'Grady. Congratulations, son. You fought a brilliant fight, strategically, tactically. I like the way you mixed it up, going so often to the midsection where you debilitated him. Thank you very much, Mr. Cosell. I, I wanted to keep hitting him in the body because his jab was very strong. I wanted to kill that jab and then be able to work combinations of my own. I kept hitting him in the body, and I think that's what slowed him down for those later round flurries. He certainly and, had no foot movement left in the later round. No, sir. Early in the fight, he came out very strong, and he was trying combinations on me. And some of them got in, some didn't. But uh, I kept trying to make him miss, didn't come back with combinations of my own. There's an old saying in boxing called block and counter, and that's what I kept trying to do. All right. Let's take a look at your first knockdown of Kenny. It happened, you'll remember, just before the bell in the second round. Look at it. Call it. Yes, sir. I, the first two rounds, he was coming on very strong, so I was just trying to let him run into something, and I uh, let it work okay. He kept dropping that right, that left hand, and I came right over the top, hit him on the nose, and I punched going down. And I really think that that's what took him down, because uh, when you punch going down, it's a little different than punching going up. You put all the weight of your body into it, and that's what I was trying to do throughout the fight. Now, did you sense the whole momentum of the fight changing with that knockdown of Kenty? Because it seemed to. Yes, sir, and I kept working the body. I think that's what slowed it down to where he wasn't able to work combinations of his mm -hmm. own. I kept hitting the body. He tried some uh, jabs, then tried to hook off a jab. And when he was hooking off a jab, he was catching me a few times, but I think I was landing the better shots of the two. That, uh, that right hand underneath the jab also killed his left hook that he was trying to hit me with, and that's in the later true. rounds, he couldn't hit me with that left hook. Quickly, I want you to look at the knockdown in the eighth round as we roll it here for you. I thought, there that, it was. I thought that knockdown was earlier than that. I, the fight went uh, progressively fast, I guess because we kept working very hard. And uh, there I tried the right hand underneath the jab, then came back with a left hook, and, and uh, I think the left hook it. is what did that's it. That's what sent him down. Very quickly, you lived with the bad eye again, didn't you? Yes, sir. I've uh, always been uh, cut on TV. I don't <laughs> cut. I've been cut, I think, five times in uh, 70, 77 professional fights. And, well, uh, congratulations, I son. I hate to cut you off, but okay. you, your dad, everybody deserves congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you you proved you're not a club fighter from <laughs> no, Oklahoma. <sir>. You're <laughs> a fighter and a champion. Thank you very much. Good luck to you, sir. So the new WBA light.